because I was given only 45 minutes for the research week, I cut down the slides to only 32. Okay. So, if you want to see the full set of slides, the full set of slides are available the card website. Please write this address. You got Palm X. Palm. P A L M X dot O R G. Palm X is my technology website. Palm X. Our tagline is Expert Experience Extreme. Okay. So when you get to the Palm X dot R G, you tambah kat belakang dia sample size. Okay, the full 140 slide ada kat sini. Each one of this file that you nampak kat sini adalah calculator untuk sample size. The other website is drtimer.me. You tambah sample size. Nampak kat atas dia tu ebook on sample size. Okay, if you click on the ebook, the book inside your hand is the same book that is going to be on the, is the same book. Every single topic that you have under the 114 slides are inside here, separate slides. Okay. How, why do we need to calculate sample size, tool to calculate sample size, everything got here. Okay. Depend on your study. As I said just now, this is a shorter version of the slides. Okay. Kita hanya focus uh, only on common study design for post-grad students. Majority of you is going to study based on prevalence. Okay. If you have outcome interest, satisfied and not satisfied. Eh? So that is based on qualitative outcome. Or for those that is based on continuous outcome. Example. Those being given an intervention program got higher knowledge on university precautions. Compared to those who are not given any lectures. So you can have that kind of intervention. Then you look at the marks. So this next page, I will show you just now all the complete set of slides. Okay. Okay. So let's go to the first part. This one what was covered by Doctor Fadil last malam. If inside your objective, you stated. That the aim of the study is to measure prevalence. This is how you calculate sample size. So, the important thing for sample size for prevalence studies. What is the prevalence that you expect when you do the study? Doctor, we have not done the study. How do we know? Based on literature review. Okay, example. You want to do a study on problem of obesity in among doctors in HUKM. Okay, doctor, it has never been done before. Can? What is the problem of obesity in Malaysia? Okay, hopefully when you do the literature review, uh, we'll come up with similar results similar to your own population. So what is the formula used? The formula used is Kish. Prevalence Kish. Why? He's the first guy to came up with the formula in 1965. And this is the formula. Okay. How to calculate? Use the Excel file. Remember the Excel file I told you just now? Okay. That is the Excel file. This is the Excel file. Okay. So you open the Excel file. Prevalence. Okay. Example. You're doing a study on the prevalence of obesity in UKM. Based on data, the prevalence of obesity is around 20%. So you type 20%. 20% is 0 0.2. So if you ask, okay. Doctor, what is the level accuracy? Level accuracy is always 5% or less. So it's either 0 0.05 or 0 0.03. However, your accuracy should be less than your prevalence. Your accuracy should be at least half of your prevalence. Kalau you dapat 
uh, you nak kaji pasal obesity di kalangan doktor di HUKM, you expect the prevalence to be 20%, sample size of doctors for you to sample is 246. Nampak? Doktor, saya tak tahu. Why? Saya ni punyalah advance. Tak ada literature review yang pernah buat ni. Apa yang kamu kaji? Berapa ramai yang menyokong Pakatan Harapan? Dan berapa ramai yang menyokong Barisan Nasional? Bila tak tahu, kita ambil 50%. Sample size 384. Saya nak sample lagi ramai. Boleh? Naikkan 3%. Kalau telefon lah 1,067 orang. Semua orang makin kau. Cik-cik sokong Barisan Nasional ke Pakatan Harapan? Pergi mampus. So this is how you decide on the sample size. Okay. Again, I give you this nota. If the problem of the outcome of interest is less than 5%, you should not be doing cross-section study. Instead, you should be doing case control study. If your supervisor still insists, then the level of decision should be half of the prevalence. Okay. Kalau my estimation, 4%. So, kalau you buat study on uh, SD patient, 4%. So, you nampak ni, 4%. You akan dapati bahawa at 4%, you letak accuracy of 2%, you dapat sample size of 300. Doktor, saya tengok, saya dapat 59 je. Dapat 59 sebab 0.05. Bila you dapat rare, less than 5%, you can ambil half of the That's why it is not good to do a cross-section study for a rare disease. Okay, so you should do a case control study for a rare disease. Doctor, I am, uh, I've been told not to study prevalence. My supervisor say, I do prevalence study, I cannot publish. Example, cross-section study. Those with risk factor, those without risk factor. How many develop the disease? How many did not develop the disease. Cohort. Okay. People who are exposed to the Chernobyl yeah? nuclear disaster. People who are not exposed. How many end up developing lymphoma? Kalau if case control, different. It is the other way around. Okay. How many have blood cancer? How, among those having blood cancer, how many were exposed to radiation? How many were not exposed to radiation? Those who did not have the disease in the same area, how many were exposed to radiation, how many were not exposed to radiation. So, two cross-section, the arrow is to balik. Okay, so now, the measurement is similar. The measurement is similar. Uh, either looking forward for the rate of disease or looking back for the rate of exposure. So, how to calculate? We try to find out how many people... Among those overweight, get diabetes. How many people among those who are normal, get diabetes? Okay. So, let's look at literature review. So, literature review say, uh, okay, based on Rifa Shiman SL 2008, they found out that among those who are normal, 7% end up with diabetes. Among those who are fat like me, the rate of the diabetes is 32%. So, how to calculate? Okay, you see, overweight, 32%. Normal, 7%. So, we calculate using a formula like this. So, for example, I calculate manually. Why do it the difficult way? You can at least do it the easy way. How to do the easy way? The, sheet, the Excel file I give, how many people who are normal get diabetes? 7%, 0.07. How many people who are fat get diabetes? 32%. 32 minus 7? 25. So, 0.25%. How many sample required? 46 per arm. You need 46 people my size? You need 46 people your size. So, you need 92 people. Okay. 46 in each arm. First, you have to go to the dichotomous. What you want to know, sample size. Can you see this, sample size? Okay. Two groups, kan? So, independent. Okay. Comparative cross-section, also use perspective. You take two proportion. Uncorrected chi-square. Okay. Alpha is always 0 0.05. Power is always 80%. The smaller rate was 0.05. 
7%. 7%. Fat people, how many people? Eh, 32%. M, ratio. One case, one control. M is equal to 1. Calculate. They give 30 samples per arm. Just now, my one for 46, kan? Why? Because the formula is like different. Under PS2, they use the Schieselsmann's formula. Under my slide, I use uh, Flash JL. Doctor, why different? Because sample size calculation is an estimate. All the aim is here is so that if you get the same result, your study will become significant. Okay? Doctor, I follow exactly like what they say, but my study is still not significant. Why not significant? My result is different than the literature review. Then because your country don't have the same problem. Copy paste like this. Clear? The outcome is continuous. I have to get continuous data sample size. So example, you're doing on hypertension. You want you give the treatment, you want the BP to drop. How much you expect to drop? 10 mm hydrogen. What is the standard deviation? 20 mm hydrogen. Okay. This is the formula. Snedico and Cochrane, 1989. We stated that compare between treatment group and control group is 10 mm hydrogen. The standard deviation is 20 mm hydrogen. You need 64 per arm. So you got two groups. They become 128. How to check? You can refer to my... Excel file. Just now the, the, the difference was 10 mm hydrogen, kan? Set division berapa? 20. Sample size required is 64 per arm. How about PS2? Same. T-test. What do you want to know? Sample size. Independent. Alpha 0.05. Power, 80%. The difference is 10. Standard deviation is 20. Ratio, 1 per 1. 1 treatment group, 1 control group. Calculate, 64 juga per arm. Doctor, my study different, doctor. I want to compare before and after. Why? So you got, you measure pre, you measure post. Formula different. Formula like this. You enter, then you get the sample size required. For this one, sample size required is 33. Okay. So you can see here, just now it was 64 again. Right? But because it's pre and post, it becomes 33. So in fact, when you do a pre and post study, your sample size requirement becomes one quarter of the original requirement. Okay? And with that, we finish the lecture.